Oh boy. Ooh, shouldn't have waited. I should have waited a little later, guys. I just ate some chicken and and I'm bloated. Oh, Lord have mercy on us. Okay, you ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready, Freddy? You guys ready? Thomas, what's up, buddy? What enjoy? I should have gave myself two hours. Tony Duck, that's Ziza. Told you I'd be back, God willing. I should have gave myself two hours. But I'm very stupid. After this, I'm going to go vegetate. Pray for me, guys. Oh, sovereign Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, the Father, Spirit. I got Mini, Freddy, Freddy Mini. We're waiting for the live stream here. It takes Rumble a few more minutes. So just if you guys can be patient, we got to wait for Rumble to show up. What's up, Ninuaya? Ninui. Oh, I got some coffee, too, bro. Ooh. We're going to have fun. This is going to be the complete annihilation of of CW Ja. Not exaggerating. If you don't believe me, ask me. <laughs> oh, let me tag him so you can do another 100-hour video. Right? So I'm going to tag him so he can do another 100-hour video. Hey, nice stinker. So I just tagged him. All right. <laughs> you and me. So he got tagged. So that, you know. All of the people. I don't know. Why. Okay, good. It's working out, guys. Pray for me, please. Cousin Avi, pray for me. Maraga, make Rumble great again. I made a stupid mistake. I was craving, so I succumbed to craving. I ate some chicken, chicken. I ate some protein bars, little cereal. Too much before going live, so now I got to make up for it. Pray for me. Sustain me by your prayers, you prayer warriors. Cry to the Lord to preserve me. Give me strict discipline, spiritually, physically, for all of us. <clears throat> and empower us with the health we need, the holiness, to glorify our God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Pray the Lord will strengthen my throat, <clears throat> my heart, my lungs, my chest, my arteries with the health I need and to stay disciplined so I can glorify Christ, make my voice pleasing to yours. So we invoke the Father, <clears throat> the Son, Almighty, the Holy Spirit to reinvigorate us, revive us, rejuvenate us, refresh, refresh us, replenish us, regenerate us. And I ask the Holy Spirit, the eternal Spirit, the Father, to control my tongue and mouth to destroy all error in us and me, all mistakes in us, glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. Destroy all sin in us. I ask the Holy Spirit to control my tongue and mouth, to give me perfect recall of every jot, tittle portion of Scripture, perfect exegesis, and give us perfect illumination, enlightenment to plunge the depth of Scripture, feast on the meat of Scripture, open our eyes to see through the eyes of the Father, the Son, the Lord Jesus, through the eyes of the Holy Spirit, and find these wonders in the word of God, leave no stone unturned to muzzle the dogs, the blasphemers, the false teachers, destroy their fake doctrines, their fake gods, and empower us to be lions and lionesses, warriors filled with the spirit to glorify Jesus Christ and slay them spiritually, crush their arguments, demolish their objections, and bring them to the feet of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Christ, for the glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I ask the Holy Spirit, to save me from stammering, from stuttering, from my lisp. Save me from confusion, agitation. That he will wash, purify, cleanse us, my daughters, our loved ones, in the blood of Jesus, our Lord. Purge us in his purifying fire. Purge our loved ones, my daughters, in the purifying fire of the Holy Spirit. Destroy every form of blasphemy, idolatry. Destroy every bondage to the flesh. Crucify our flesh. Destroy our flesh, the fruits of our flesh. Destroy my bondage to food to lust and impurities and walk in holiness and righteousness and purity and love and devotion that the spirit will fill us with his fruit his virtues his righteous deeds and the holy spirit will give us the greatest gifts perfect faith in our god perfect hope in our god perfect love for our god and destroy our fears doubts and belief and control our tongues and mouths to never betray deny our shame or blaspheme our god father son and holy spirit to transform us, to conform to the image of our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. 
that the Lord Jesus will shine in and through us, in and through our loved ones, in and through my daughters, and sit a throne upon our hearts. And I ask the Holy Spirit to give us perfect attentiveness and focus. Destroy distractions from Satan and his dogs. Muzzle the dogs of Satan. Teach them to fear the Lord. And bless the inner connection, the audiovisual qualities. And beatify me and strengthen me and heal me. Heal us. Make us whole. Giving us the flesh of Jesus Christ, the precious blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, to make us whole spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and physically. May the Holy Spirit protect these channels for his glory. He doesn't need me. You don't need me. We need him. He's the teacher. We are his disciples. Destroy censorship. Protect the channel from being deleted. Not only YouTube, but Rumble and all these articles we give to the Spirit. We give all we have to the Spirit, to the Spirit of the Father and Son, that He owns us and fills us and possesses us and sanctifies us for the glory of Christ. And I ask the Holy Spirit to do that for my daughters, for our loved ones. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Open our eyes, perfect our sight spiritually and physically, and open our ears to your voice. The voice of the Son, the voice of the Father in Scripture. Drown out all other voices in our lives, the lives of my daughters, our loved ones. Enslave us and transform us and empower us by your voice to obey and live out and love your voice and shine in and through us. Destroy the beams in our eyes. Destroy fears, doubts, unbelief, double-mindedness, and hypocrisy to be doers of the word. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But those from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. But now and forever. Unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father. And of the Son of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus name we pray. Alright guys you know the rules. Make rumble great again. Maraga. I like rumble more than I like. What they call it, YouTube, but Lord's will be done. So I'm going to continue where we left off, but this time we're going to talk about John 10. Now, because of Stafford, I had to bring out the books on Psalms. I'll explain to you. I have a library of books, most of which I have not read. Of the dozens and dozens of books, I probably haven't read over 90% of them. So let's say I have 2,000 books. I've only read less than 10%. Over 90% of them I haven't read. So why do I have them? For reference. I will get books and I will stash them away for reference. So if a subject comes up, then I can go to that book and read or quote and cite for a live stream or a post. So because of Stafford, I had to bring out the commentaries on the Psalms that I have with me. Not all my books are with me. They're in another state with the Assyrian guy. So I had to bring out this one here. I had to bring out this one here, right? And I had to bring out this one here because it's all about Psalm 82. All because of Stafford, I had to do it. Pray, guys, I get stricter. God, give me strict discipline. Break my bondage to eat less, fast more as an act of worship, all right? All right, so uh, don't ask me that question right now, brother. I don't have time to answer that question. Now, we have the slow mode up mod, right? On one second. We have the slow man on that. We should, right? Pray the Holy Spirit gives me perfect health in my throat and discipline. We have this. Yeah, we good. Okay, good. So I had to bring it out because it's going to be game over for Stafford. If you listen to the argument, and I trust Holy Spirit to guard my tongue from all error. If you listen to the argument, it's over for Stafford. That's it. He's done. I'm not exaggerating. You may think I'm exaggerating. Not only has he been destroyed and obliterated, and his fake God eviscerated, annihilated, sent to the pit of hell, but this one will end pretty much his reputation as someone who knows enough of the scriptures to object to the Trinity. Because the triune God lives. The Trinity is God. The Bible is a Trinitarian book. All other views that go against the Trinity are false from the pit of hell. That's why anti-Trinitarians get crushed. Their gods get destroyed by the one and true living God, Father, Son, and Spirit. And Jesus is God in flesh, the God-man, right? Let me drink some coffee. But this one will be over because one of his favorite passages that he repeats over and over again ad infinitum, ad nauseum, over and over again. Hit the like button, guys, for algorithm and invite folks. Is John 10, 
34 to 36, because he thinks that passage proves Jesus is a God and a son of God, one of the angelic created sons of God, although greater than all of them, still an angelic created son of God. It's going to be so bad for him that honestly, if he's honest and he fears God and he's not that demonized where Satan has taken over and there's still hope, he will not bring this argument again. And better yet, he'll stop rejecting the Trinity because his arguments are pathetically bad. They're easily destroyed by the person who is filled with the Spirit, guided by the Spirit, illuminated by the Spirit to see what the Bible teaches about the Trinity. And his 15 subscribers will start leaving him. Okay? Let me put on the air some more, guys. It's a little hot on me because, oh, wait. So pray for me. Ooh, for Lord. Lord, help me to get back. Please, Lord. Not to lose this victory. You are our power and strength. So. Let's get into it. You ready? Let me show you what the objection is now. Again, to remind Stafford, who's going to be watching, remember Stafford, I have autism. So take it easy on me. Remember, don't attack me. Don't say I'm possessed. I am possessed by the true Holy Spirit, filled by the true Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. You're possessed, but not by the Holy Spirit, by something, the dragon, your father, until you repent. But take it easy. Remember, I'm on the spectrum, and you said, because I'm the spectrum, you're going to remove the videos. Right? Remember, I'm just autistic. Now, let me go to the text itself, and let's begin. It may take me one session, two sessions, we'll say. The Spirit leads. But let's go here. Let's go here. All right, let's go to the Bible. You ready? Okay. Let's use Legacy Standard Bible because it uses a form of divine name. All right? Boy, I can't wait to recover from this. Oh, my goodness. What did I do myself? All right. So here is the point. Let's read here. Okay. And then we're going to go into Psalm 82. Okay. Here's his point. All right. Get ready. I got to go slow. Pray the Holy Spirit will guide me. He's a teacher. We are his disciples. You're not my disciples. Okay. So I'm going to go slow, but repeat myself over and over again until it becomes second nature. Yeah, here you go. All right, this is what I can do to this guy. All right, here we go. Let's do this, Brutus. All right. Legacy Standard Bible, because it uses a form of divine name, Yahweh. All right. John 10, 30, 36. I'll get back to the context of John 10, 30 later. And I and the Father are one. Let me do this. I and the Father one. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered him, I showed you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you stoning me? The Jews answered him, for a good work, we do not stone you, but for blasphemy. Because you being a man, you being a man, make yourself God. This is going to be key. Make yourself God. Jesus answered them, has it not been written in your law? And now he quotes Psalm 82, 6. I said you are God's. Be called them gods to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world? You are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God. Okay, now, just to remind Stafford before he starts spazzing, manifesting, and thinking that I'm the one who is possessed. Yes, we are all possessed by the true Holy Spirit, filled by the Holy Spirit of God. You don't know Jesus, so you don't have the true spirit. May you repent. Anyway, focus. I'm not responding to Stafford's most recent discussion on this. I didn't watch it. Now, if he wants to send me a clip so I can bury that objection and bury his fake God by the power of Jehovah Jesus, I'll be pleased. I'm responding to the arguments he has made in his books, the various editions of Joe's Witnesses Defendant, and in videos that I've heard in the past. So don't complain and get angry and throw a fit. Well, you didn't refute my. Unless you have something new, clip it. Tell me what the main argument is, and I'll demolish it, decimate it by the power of Jehovah Jesus. I promise you. None of your arguments are good. None of them are good. After the Spirit trains and disciplines someone to see the truth of Trinity, your arguments are laughable. So though you're the best Aryan apologist, 
that tells you how pathetic Arianism is, that even their best gets destroyed easily by Jehovah Jesus. Glory to you, Jehovah Jesus. And from someone who has no formal education. So can you imagine? Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Anyway. Now, here's his argument. <clears throat> when they accuse Jesus of blasphemy, because he's a man who makes himself out to be God, Jesus quotes Psalm 82, 6. And this is a passage that Stafford likes to hammer over and over and over again. And infinitum ad nauseum. He did it with James White. He did it with Rob Bowman. He as if we've never answered, but it falls on deaf ears. Now, why does he think this is such a powerful text and proving that his fake God exists? Because Psalm 82 is talking about the gods, the gods who rule the nations. And Sa Stafford assumes this means that Jesus is saying he's one among them, though the greatest among them. So he's one among them, but the greatest of them. See, Jesus is claiming to be a son of God like they are and a God like they are, although the greatest among them. Because unlike these corrupt gods who fail to honor Jehovah and fulfill his will, whom now Jehovah will destroy, Jesus remains faithful to his father and perfectly so. All right, now let's go to the psalm. Okay, you ready now? Let's go into it. I need you to pay attention. All right. I need you to pay attention. Do not engage each other. Engage me, please, because this is now in depth and you're going to see the embarrassment. All right. Focus, ABC, and everyone. All right. Let's continue. Here's what he's referring to God takes his stand in the congregation of God. Here, the word is Elohim, Adat Il, congregation of Il, singular form for God in Hebrew. He judges in the midst of the gods. So notice, Elohim takes his stand. Others translate as presides in the congregation. Adet il. Il, singular for God in Hebrew. Elohim, il. And this Elohim judges in the midst of the gods, these Elohim. So this God is judging these gods. Why is he judging them? Why is he judging them? Focus so you can learn. Because this is the psalm that our Lord quoted. Why is he judging them? How long will you judge unrighteously? So these gods are judging, ruling in injustice and show partiality to the wicked, Selah. And they're helping the wicked to prosper on earth. But now these gods were told to give justice to the poor and the orphan, the fatherless. But instead they ignored, neglected the poor and the fatherless. You see it? Justify the afflicted and destitute. You see that? These gods were told to come to the vindication, the aid of the afflicted, destitute, to help the oppressed, the poor, help them, vindicate them. They were told to protect the poor and needy, to protect them and deliver them out of the hand of the wicked. Instead, they helped the wicked to oppress the poor and the orphan, and they helped the wicked corrupt the earth by spreading evil. So now God is angry with these gods. God is upset with these gods. And now God is going to arise to condemn them to death and dispossess them of the nations. They do not know and do not understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken, meaning because they're wicked and evil, they've corrupted the earth because the earth is built on the foundation of justice and it becomes unjust then God arises to then judge. Okay? Everyone got the context now? Before I move on? Everyone got the context now before I move on? Before I move on? I need you to get it so I can move on. Here's now the passage the Lord is quoting. Now, some believe, see, if you read the commentaries, some believe that verses 2 all the way to 7, God is speaking. That God is now bringing the charges against the gods, right? So God is telling the gods why he's going to judge them. And so some believe that verse 6 and 7 is God speaking. So he starts speaking from 2 all the way to 7. Now others think, others actually think that God is not the one speaking in verse 6, but it's Asaph that he's speaking. 
And definitely verse 8, it's Asaph, the psalmist. Why? Because it says, Arise, O God, judge the earth, for it is you who will inherit all the nations. So we definitely know that verse 8, the psalmist is speaking, crying out to God, invoking God to judge the earth and inherit the nations. Take the nations back as your possession from these gods because they have failed. So that's the psalmist speaking. Also, verse 1 would be the psalmist, okay, Asaph. He's speaking. He's telling you God takes a stand in the congregation of God. He's now going to pass judgment on the gods. Now, from 2 all the way to 5, commentators believe it's now God pronouncing judgment, pronouncing the charges against the gods. Why? He's going to judge them. Others would include 6 and 7 as God speaking. And yet others say, no, that's Asaph. You understand the structure of the psalm? Structure of the psalm? Everyone got it, right? So is God speaking from verses 2 to 7? Or is he speaking from verses 2 to 5? But most commentators believe God is definitely speaking from verses 2 to 5 because he's the one pronouncing judgment and bringing the charges against the gods, why they're going to be judged and condemned. Six and seven, some say it's God speaking to the gods or it's Asaph. All right, so as long as we get that, and I'm not here to settle that issue. Is it God speaking from verses two to seven or two to five? I don't know, and to me it doesn't matter. If God stops speaking at five and now it's Asaph speaking from six to eight, or God is the one speaking from verses two to seven and then Asaph in verse eight, Whatever it is, it's not going to impact or affect the interpretation. Right? Everyone got it before I move on? May the Spirit help us to go deep into the text and unpack it and not stay surface and then live it out. Right? Okay. But here's what the Lord quoted. Uh, why does your mother have disposable potty parts? When she's doing muta with the Shia, when they come and do muta with her, you son of Satan, you filthy, wicked, spiritual bastard. Now, I know there are people watching and saying, this guy's harsh. I have to be. Because you have people here who do not respect the rules, who come here disrespect, mock and attack, ridicule the scriptures, our God and us, even though I warn them and I tell them the rules. So they have no respect. We have no respect for them. Answer a fool according to his folly and stuff them with their vomit because they're dogs, right? And spiritual bastards. The Lord rebuke them, crush their mouths until they repent and fear the Lord. Okay, now here, this is what Jesus quoted. I said you are gods and all of you are the sons of the Most High. Our Lord quotes that in John 10, 34. Jesus answered him, has it not been written in your law? I said you are gods. So now, the interpretation of this. Depending on which scholar or commentator, you will find one of three views. Are you ready? Who are the gods? Well, some will tell you these gods are human rulers, which Stafford does not accept. Stafford rejects that interpretation, and he thinks he's got a good argument because he used that to bash Kelly and show why Kelly's stupid. And Kelly is stupid, but for other reasons. He can't respond if his salvation depends on it because he's stupid. He's not that educated. May the Lord humble him to repent. And may the Lord save us from becoming that way. Kelly argues these are humans. And Stafford bashed him because of verse 7. And he thinks this is a knockout argument. It's a knockout, right? But it's a knockout to Stafford and his fake God. Because I'm about to knock him out by the power of Jehovah Jesus. But let's see what the interpretation is. One interpretation is, this is referring to human beings as gods, the rulers. Now, these, these are either the rulers of the nations, meaning the kings, who thought themselves to be divine, gods on earth, or it's referring to the human rulers of Israel. So those who say the gods here are humans will either say it's referring to the Israelite judges, who are called by God to rule justly, but they corrupted themselves, or it's talking to, about all the kings of the nations, the rulers of the earth, the pagan kings like Nebuchadnezzar, 
Cyrus, and so on and so forth. So that's interpretation number one. You with me there? That's interpretation number one. Now, in that interpretation, let me repeat, we're creature repetition, we repeat it repetitively to become second nature. In that interpretation, scholars are divided, whether it's referring to all the human kings or is it referring to the Israelite judges? So keep that in mind. The other interpretation is that these are angelic creatures, the members of God's heavenly council, the divine council, where God presides over the host of heaven. And so that these gods are actually the angelic creatures who are given authority, who are assigned authority to rule over the nations. That's interpretation number two. Okay, we got it? Before I move on? I can't move on unless you get it. And I want to repeat myself more than once. You got to get this. Right? Mike, if I have to say creative spirits, brother, you know you got, you're in the wrong channel, right? That's Stafford's position. It's also the view of James A. Hamilton, Jr. It's also the position of this commentary, James M. Hamilton, Jr. And it's also the position of this commentary, the NIV application commentary, Psalms, Volume 2, W. Dennis Tucker, Jr. and James A. Grant. Now, these are evangelical Christians. Evangelical Christians. They believe it's referring to the spirit creatures, the members of God's heavenly council. This too is an evangelical commentary. So that means the author is an evangelical Trinitarian. It's not only Stafford's view. Also, it was the view of the late Dr. Michael Heiser. You remember Michael Heiser? I need you to pay attention. Michael Heiser, outstanding scholar, Theologian who's now resting with Jesus, that I don't doubt. He's with the Lord, resting. He's with our Lord, resting. Right? Let me just do this. I'll sit over there for now and I'll come back. He's sitting, he's resting with our Lord. Let me just sit here and I'll come back when I need to look at the commentaries. Let me do this. Brutus. All right. Sorry. He believed that these are the members of God's heavenly council the lower case gods, these spirit beings created with abilities, with intelligence, wisdom, and powers that we don't have. So in that sense, they were gods. Okay, I got to go a little deeper. Now, this is the position, sorry, of Greg Stafford. Okay, this is the position of Greg Stafford. Okay. So let me put up the screen so you can see me and the screen. Okay. Now, Michael Heiser was a Trinitarian. He did some fantastic work, outstanding work. He's, he's with the Lord. I believe that. May we join him in glory if the Lord tarries. Okay. So he was a Trinitarian, but he believed that Psalm 82 is referring to the heavenly council. And he believed in this heavenly council, you had Yahweh whom he believed is triune, because he worshipped the Trinity. You had gods, these lowercase gods, whom Yahweh created, whom Yahweh sustains, whom Yahweh enabled and endowed with their abilities, and then the angels as messengers. Now, in this view, these created gods are finite, limited, and pose no threat to God. The true God can wipe them out in a nanosecond with ease. Because all their powers and abilities comes from the true God. And just like he brought them into existence and gave them those abilities, he can wipe them out of existence, and they cannot pose any challenge to his sovereignty. Okay? You understand the position? Now, folks like Heiser believe that Jesus is not one of these gods. He's not a god, a son of God, a lesser god, whom Jehovah created and endowed with his abilities. They take Jesus to be 
the visible Yahweh, a member of the Trinity, because to them, Yahweh is triune. Yahweh is the Father and His uncreated Son and Eternal Spirit. Whereas Stafford thinks, because the Father alone is Jehovah, Yaho, Jesus cannot be Yahweh ontologically, only in representation, representationally, because Jesus is one of these gods, not the gods that are condemned. No, because he says Jesus is righteous and holy, but he's one of the gods of the council. So he would be a member of the council of gods, though the greatest of them and superior to them. Okay, are you guys getting this? I can't move on if you're not getting this. Because I got to unpack it. That's why I'll probably do two parts. If you got it, then that means you can still believe in the Trinity. Affirm the Trinity. Juan, we didn't ask your opinion. Please, brother, stop chiming in before I get you out of here. And believe these gods exist. In other words, believing that these gods exist does not lead to a denial of the Trinity. A rejection of the Trinity. It does not follow. If other gods exist, the Trinity cannot be true. So even if Stafford is right, he's desperate. Okay, he's right. All right. How does that prove that Jesus is a God, a son of God that was created? It doesn't. Jesus can still be the uncreated almighty son, one with the Father and the Spirit, who makes up the identity of the true God, Yahweh, and he be the one with the Father and Spirit who created these gods and gave them their abilities and can wipe them out because they pose no challenge to him. Right? So you understand there are Trinitarians who accept this view of Stafford. Okay, I just want everyone to get this. In other words, believing this position doesn't undermine, refute the Trinity, and it's not anti-Trinitarian. This is why Stafford is desperate and clutching at straws. So what other gods exist? That doesn't mean Jesus is one of them. You need to prove it exegetically, contextually. You, you follow, right? Are you with me there before I move on? Because I'm going to give you now the third view. There's a third view, which is a combination of both interpretations. The third view says that these gods, yes, do refer to the heavenly council, but it also refers to their human counterparts, meaning if you read the Bible carefully, it says that when God divided the nations, which took place at the Tower of Babel, and he scattered them as part of the judgment and punishment that fell on these gods, I'm sorry, on these peoples for rebelling, God then assigned one of these spirit sons of his to rule over them and not in a positive way because these are the rulers of the nations who misled them into taking them as gods and goddesses and worshiping them as gods and goddesses and misleading them from the identity of the true God. So this view, the third view says, it's referring to the spirit rulers and their human agents because these spirit rulers work through human agents, human rulers, so that behind every human ruler, there's a spirit ruler using that human ruler, working through that human ruler to bring about his will. So does everyone understand what the third position is? Yes, Joe. And where do we get that from? We get it from Scripture. For example, let me go to Daniel. Daniel. And I've showed this to you before, right? Daniel 10, 13. Watch here. Now, this is going to bury Stafford and destroy his fake God. It's going to destroy his fake God because his God is fake. But you got to listen. I'm setting it up. Daniel 10, 13. But the prince, now the angel has come to Daniel. Daniel has been fasting, praying 21 days to get an answer. It took the angel 21 days to give him the answer, and here's why. But the prince of the king Persia was standing against me for 21 days. That's why it took me 21 days to get you the answer. Because the 
the ruler of the king of Persia was preventing me from reaching you. Then the old Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. Now I had been left there with the kings of Persia. Kings, plural, of Persia. Now you understand what that means? Understand what that means? Here, the angel is saying that the prince, the ruler of the kingdom of Persia, did not allow me to reach you in time. He detained me 21 days, and Michael had to come to get him out of the way, and now I've arrived. Obviously, whoever this prince of Persia is, it cannot refer to the human ruler. It cannot refer to Ahasuerus. It cannot refer to Xerxes or Cyrus, right? Because a human ruler is not capable of stopping an angelic spirit creature who is mightier than him, who remains invisible to his human eyes. So who was this ruler of Persia that could see the angel and put up a fight? See an angel and put up the fight. The spirit ruler, right? The spirit ruler. So what did you learn? All kingdoms, though they have human rulers, have spirit rulers, spirit beings, spirit creatures, who are actually ruling over them through that human ruler. Right? And here again, Daniel 10, 20 to 21. Then he said, do you know why I came to you? But I shall now return to fight against the prince of Persia. So now I'm going to fight the prince of Persia. Who's that? And after he does, so I'm going forth, and behold, the prince of Greece is about to come. So the next spirit ruler is going to come to prominence and oppose God's host is the ruler of Greece. What this is a spirit creature saying, I'm going to fight the ruler of Persia. And then the ruler of Greece is going to come to oppose. Well, whoever these rulers are, they're able to put up a fight against angelic spirit creatures and even see them. Right? Right? You forget that demons were angels. See that comment there? Only shows you don't understand A, B, Z. Even Satan and demons are spirit creatures who are mighty and powerful. So take it easy on the comments before I send you to Mike Winger. Okay, did we get that? However, I will, I will tell you what is inscribed in the writing of truth. Now there is no one who exerts strength with me against these forces except Michael, your prince. This is why Paul says, when we enter different territories, earthly territories, we're not opposing the human rulers only or human agencies and governments. We're actually fighting against here, Ephesians 6, 12. What happened here? What happened? All right. Didn't work. Oh, boy. Let me do this. Let me stop sharing. All right. One second, folks. I don't know what happened here. Why did it go down? I don't know. See? In Jesus' name, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse us of all evil in our flesh. Yep. See, it's not opening now. Hmm. Ain't that ironic? Let me see. All right. Let me find another one. Bible. Let me do this. See, now I got to go here because it won't work. See, it shut down on me. You believe it? Lord Father, says, speak my name. Hmm. One second. See how it works? Let's see if it works now. Yep, not working. Not this one, so I got to go to another one. All right, I got to use another translation. NESV. All right. Can you believe that? Shut down on me. Here it goes. We're going to use one. By the way, ironically, ironically, guess who likes this translation? Kelly Powerless loves to use this translation as he butchers scriptures because he thinks he's smart. Here it is. 
We're going to have to use this one. Ready? Yes, here we go. I'm going to use the New American Standard Bible, even though I want to use Legacy, because it has a form of divine name. I'll, I'll switch in a minute. So here it is, right here. Let's go up. All right. Ephesians 6.12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. You see? See that? You caught it, right? Our battle is against who? The spiritual rulers. The rulers who rule from heaven over the earth. Spirit creatures. So the human rulers, they rule, but the real powers are the spirit rulers that are working through them and influencing them, controlling them. Right? No, YouTube didn't crash. It's Bible Gateway crashed. Right? So this interpretation says that the gods of Psalm 82 are the spirit rulers and they're human agents. This is why the Bible says when God punishes the kingdoms for their evil, he doesn't just punish the earthly rulers, but the heavenly rulers that work through them. Here, Isaiah 24, 21. So it'll happen in that day, then the Lord will punish the host of heaven on high and the kings of the earth on earth. You see it? The host are the heavenly host, these spirit creatures who are on high and the kings of the earth through whom they work. All right? We got it? See what that means? So, the third view says it's both human rulers and angelic creatures, spirit beings that work through human rulers, which means if you believe in the Bible, if you guys believe in the Bible, and you must believe in the Bible, because the Bible is true, the spirit realm is real. Behind all agencies, there are spirit beings working through agents, humans, and governments to bring about the evil they intend. So behind Biden behind Kamala Harris behind these senators the real powers working through the United States government the White House are not just these humans but the spirit rulers that are working through them controlling them and moving them to fulfill their agenda and that's what all the governments Israel don't deceive yourself Christian Zionists the the government of Israel they're anti-Christian. They're Zionist. They don't have God working through them. Any government that opposes the lordship of Jesus Christ, the sonship of Jesus Christ, the rulership of Jesus Christ, and do not acknowledge Jesus' law over their lives, God's Holy Spirit is not working through that agency. Right? Is it, is it making sense? God's spirit doesn't work through that agency. Doesn't. Jesus reigns. He is Lord. He's king of creation. His rule has to be your rule. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. See, that's the prayer. Your rule over our lives. Your will govern our lives. Govern our politics govern our decisions socially, politically, economically. If not, then you're opposing his rule. You're defying him. That means you have an evil spirit influencing you and the Lord will come in judgment against you. Right? So as we speak right now in Chicago, the Democratic Convention, I just read that they're giving out free abortions and vasectomies as part of the Democratic National Convention. And these candidates are some of the most fiercest advocates for abortion, for murder. Some of them even want to legislate that in your third trimester, you can murder the unborn child. You think God is with them? 
God is with them. God is in that convention. And shamefully, I heard something today. Yep, a sacrifice to Satan, to Baal, child sacrifice. There was an uproar among Catholics, and Catholics, make your voice heard. I heard that today, I don't know if he's a priest or a cardinal, maybe you can Google it, a Catholic representative, a clergy, I don't know if he was a cardinal, I don't know, bishop, check it out, because I was listening to the radio, actually dared to go to the Democratic National Convention and say a prayer. How? How? Catholics, we have wolves. Orthodox, you have wolves. You have wolves, sons of Satan, Jezebels of Satan, infiltrating the churches. But you, the sheep, and you lions and lionesses, you need to call them out, condemn them. It was a cardinal, huh? See? Right? Yeah. Guys, why are you shocked? Churches are infiltrated, dude. Jesus was infiltrated. Judas was of the devil, and he's one of the 12. The apostles were infiltrated, and they even said, there's wolves in your midst, and some from among you will leave, and not sparing the flock. Right? So there you go. So what's this passage again? When God wants to destroy kingdoms for their evil, he doesn't just punish the kings of the earth on earth, but the hosts of heaven on high, because the hosts of heaven are the ones manipulating the human rulers, working through them. And these human rulers are their puppets and instruments. So do we understand the three interpretations? There you go. See? The three interpretations of Psalm 82. Come on, Osana. Don't ask me that question. When you ask questions that are obvious, I have to get you out of here. Yeah, and they say he did his cross too? Wow, shame. All right, everyone listening? All right. So the three interpretations, I hope they'll work. Who are the gods? One interpretation? See, now notice NASB translated rulers. Interesting. It's the word Elohim. Here, one interesting is these are human rulers who are called gods. Why are they called gods? If these are human rulers, crypto, I'd like to debate your mother because I want to know why she does muta with the Shia when she's Sunni. She's supposed to do Messiah. Shut that up, you son of the devil. Return to your vomit, piece of garbage. You couldn't deb debate Aisha, who is nine, playing with dolls. All right? Filthy piece of garbage. Lord rebuke you. All right, now everyone listening? All right. Why are they called gods? They're called gods in the sense that they are appointed by God to act in the place of God, to rule on behalf of God as God's representative. So they're called gods in that sense. You understand? They're called gods because God appoints them to rule on his behalf, implementing his rule, endow with his authority. So that's one interpretation. All right. The other interpretation is these are not human rulers, whether the kings of the nations or Israelite judges, but rather these are heavenly spirit creatures who dwell in God's heavenly council whom God is authorized to rule over the nations. The third interpretation is that it's both. The heavenly spirit creatures that rule through their human agents, human rulers. Now, what interpretation? He did, huh? What is the interpretation that I hold? I'm open to anyone. In other words, I really don't know. And my interpretation doesn't mean I'm right. My interpretation doesn't mean I'm right. So I want I want to repeat. Whatever view I hold doesn't mean I'm right because I'm not God. I'm not a prophet. I'm not an apostle, apostle. I'm not inspired. I'm not infallible. Now, I'm, I'm more infallible than crazy I am, but I'm not infallible. Okay? 
Oh, so praise I am. He broke his promise again. I thought he said, because I'm on the spectrum, I have autism, he's going to be nice. He manifested again, praise I am. Greg manifested again, huh? Okay. So which interpretation? I really don't know. I don't know. And it doesn't affect my view of the Trinity. I don't know. So whatever interpretation you want to take, go ahead. But I'm now going to demolish Greg's confidence. It's okay, bro. I don't need it. Because earlier he was saying, yeah, Sam's got on a spectrum. And then, and then tomorrow's going to destroy me by doing another 100-hour response. Don't waste your time, praise. We already know he can't control himself. Now, guys, who's really got mental issues and can't control himself? Me or Stafford. He keeps promising. He'll be nice and remove these videos. And then all I do is say something. He gets triggered. He starts manifesting. He starts foaming because he is deranged. He's not healthy any more than Kelly is. He is being pricked and oppressed by the dragon, his father, until he repents. And here I am laughing at his expense. Isn't that amazing? I'm the one with the issues, but I'm in their head because I know the thing to say and I trigger them. Ain't that amazing? If I want Kelly to manifest and start foaming, I'll just put a post that say something. If I want Greg to flip and lose, lose it and start foaming, all I say is you're of the dragon. Your God is fake. You've been demolished. You're overrated. Your arguments are pathetic. <laughs> Ain't I a stinker? Ain't I a stinker? All right. So. Now, let me see a blue a Bible is working here. Let's see. Lord, I hope it's working. Yeah. Now, here Stafford thinks there's no way, no way. Okay, now it's working. Glory to God. Let me put it on there. There's no way this can refer to human rulers. Are you ready for the embarrassment? Guys, if you learn this argument, Stafford will never recover ever again. If you learn this argument, Stafford will never recover. He will lose all credibility. Anyone who's honest and as I see will know that he's a joke. The best Aryan apologist and his arguments are pathetic because his God is fake. Right? You can bring the best heretic and he'll be demolished by the power of the triune God. Okay, now listen, though. I need you to listen. Why? Here's where he thinks he got you. He got you, son. They can't be human rulers, whether the kings of the nations or Israelite judges. You know why? And he was chiding Kelly, called them stupid. <laughs> he goes, see, look, nevertheless, you'll die like men. You see that, Kelly? You idiot. You dummy. Stupid. You're beyond gone. You're worse than Sam. Because if they're men, then... You won't say they will die like men. What other way can they die except like men if they're men? You understand the argument now? You see the objection? He thinks he got you. He got you. Okay? How can they be human rulers when it says their punishment is they'll die like men? See, if you're going to die like a man, that means you're not a man. Because if they're a man, if they're men, human, Lord, save me from Aaron Samry. If they're human, then there's only one way they could die. Die as men. But the fact that says you're going to die like men means they're not men. You see his argument? Oh, he got you, Kelly. He got you, Kelly. He destroyed you. Now you want me to pulverize him and his arrogance? Do you want me to pulverize him and his arrogance? You ready? Now watch how it's going to backfire. You want me to pulverize him? Okay. Because he's so full of himself that he thinks he's a genius. He's not. Again, I thank Jesus for him. I have love for him. In spite of me rebuking him and chastening him and muzzling him and exposing him and crushing his fake God, that's because my love for Jesus is more than my love for him. Jesus is Jehovah. He is our life. May we live and die for Jesus and lose all friendships for the glory of Christ. 
right? So it's because of Christ I'm going to expose him and muzzle him. Because he's so arrogant, thinks he's smart, he ends up proving too much. You know why? Okay, watch the embarrassment. So these gods rule, right? They rule. They're rulers, right? Now, if we follow Einstein's suggestion, if this phrase, nevertheless, you will die like men mean, see, if they die like men, then they're not men because they're going to die like men do, which means that they must be some other be type of beings, but they're going to experience death like humans do. Well, that means they can't be rulers either, moron. Hey, Greg, Bible grapist, graping the Bible, pervert. Then here it says, and you'll fall like any one of the princes. Oh, if they're going to fall like one of the princes, that means they're not princes. They're not rulers, idiot. Moron. You caught it? You see, in his arrogance, his father, the dragon, made him so arrogant that Jesus now made him look stupid. Moron. And you're making fun of Kelly. I think you're more gone than Kelly. At least Kelly worships the trying God, even though he's stupid. Moron. You caught it here? You saw how it buried, right? So, genius, Greg, if dying like men means they're not human, then falling like any of the princes means they're not rulers. But we know that can't be the case because they're rulers, moron. You see how stupid? But I'm going to go deeper in his burial. I'm just beginning the burial. All right? I'm just beginning. Just to show you again. Watch here. And I know he's watching right now. He's going to want to. Don't take it personally, Greg. Remember, I'm autistic. I'm on the spectrum. I'm autistic, Greg. Don't take it personally. You don't get angry at people that autism, do you? Have some compassion on me, you brute. You bully. I'm autistic, man. Take it easy on me. Be better than me. Here. It's going to get worse for him. Nevertheless, Ke, you see that particle or preposition? I should say, I'm sorry. Preposition, ke adam. Like Adam, you shall die. And here, u ke ahat, ke ahat ha sarim. Like one of the princes, princess, not princess. And the word sar can mean ruler. So I'll translate a ruler. Like Adam, you will die. And like any of the rulers, you'll die. Or fall, you'll fall. But wait, I thought they are rulers. Why are they likened to rulers who fall? They are rulers. So if being likened to men who die means they're not human, then being likened to rulers who fall means they're not rulers. Right? But I want to embarrass them a little more. Okay, are you ready? Number one, it is not all certain. That the text actually says, like men. Do you know why? Because it says, ke adam, like Adam. Here it is in front of you. Do you see it? So is it saying, like humans you'll die, or like Adam you will die? Just like Adam fell, though he was a ruler in the image of God, but he fell because of sin and lost his immortality, became mortal. You too, because of your sin, will die like Adam died. So, Greg, who in the world told you that here, ke Adam means like men? It may mean like Adam, and I'm going to show you evidence for that. Like Adam. Are you ready? So, you will die like Adam did, because Adam was a ruler like you, and the image of God like you. But when he sinned, he lost mortality, immortality and became mortal. See it? Unless you think this is my interpretation. All right, let's go here. You ready? Let's go to Chabad.org. And I'm going to show you the commentaries. Chabad.org. You ready? You follow me, right? 
So now if it's like Adam, you'll fall. You just destroy Greg's major argument. Yes, like Adam, they will die. Because like Adam, they sin. And like Adam, they lost the gift of immortality. So it doesn't mean they're not human. It means they're not Adam. They're not the man Adam. But they're human in that they're sons of Adam. And they share the judgment of Adam because they sin like Adam. And here, lest you think, it's my interpretation, Chabad.org. Let's go here. And I'm going to show you the Jewish interpretation. And then again, the commentaries. Boy, he thought he was slick, huh? You understand where I'm going with this, right? Boy, he thought he was slick. Right here. Let's see here. Now, this is Chabad.org, an ultra-Orthodox Jewish website with their own translation of the scriptures with Rashi commentary, a medieval rabbi who was an anti-Christian. How do they interpret Psalm 82? God stands in the congregation of God to do what? To see whether they, the judges, judge fairly. They take it to mean human judges who are angel-like, who are to be like angels. Okay, now watch what they say here. I said, you are angelic creatures, and all of you are angels of the Most High. You are angelic creatures, angels. When I gave you the Torah, I gave it to you in the condition that the angel of death should not rule over you. It's not about the human rulers, the Israelite judges, being angelic-like. Indeed, as man, you shall die. Now, notice his inter interpretation. Indeed, as Adam. Not men, as Adam. See it? Focus, Abel. Ke Adam, it's used in Job 31, 33, and Hosea 6, 7. And from the context, it's clearly referring to Adam, the first male. And he thought he had a great argument, huh? It's too bad that Kelly is arrogant and full of himself. Because if Kelly humbled himself, I would teach him this stuff, and he'd demolish Greg with ease. But he's too arrogant and stupid. See that? Okay, well, maybe he doesn't like them because they're Jews. Okay, you ready? Let me go here. You ready? Watch. He thought he was slick, huh? He thought he was slick, huh? Damn, you got me, Greg. Greg, well, Greg, don't be angry, please. Here. Don't be angry, Greg, please. Here, look at this translation here. Right here, Psalms. Can you see the print? Now I need glasses. Inverting these, 82, 6 to 7 tells the gods that they will die like Adam. See it? Commentary, Greg. You see it? You see it on the screen? They will die like Adam. Page 86. You see that, right? The first to present his case seems right until his neighbor comes and questions him. Proverbs 18, 17. You're getting buried, Greg, like your fake God is getting destroyed by Jehovah Jesus Almighty. All right. The triumph God lives and your God doesn't exist. Okay, still think I'm lying? All right. Look at the here, the translation. Watch the translation right here. Right here. You see it? Like what? See it right there? Do you see it? Surely, like Adam, you will die. Ke Adam. You see it, right? Thank you, Greg. Because of you and your mouth, I had to bring out the commentaries because I haven't read these. Like I said, I have this for reference. Greg, the more you open your blasphemous mouth to bark, the more Jehovah Jesus is crushing your mouth and shutting you up, silencing you because your God is fake. My God is real. Watch here. Okay. Right here at the bottom. God granted these powers, positions of authority, positions they abuse like wicked men. Therefore, the powers will be punished. God declared in Psalm 82 7 that the powers will die like Adam. Adam sinned right here at the bottom. See it?
All right? Page 89. Bye-bye, Stafford. Your God was destroyed long ago. The powers will die like Adam. Adam sinned, and the penalty was death. That's his commentary. Oh, but hold on. I'm not done with you, Greg. Your, your burial began long ago. I'm not taking your ashes and spreading them over the Kaaba. How about this one? Ready? Hear this commentary. Are you loving this, guys? I'm doing it for you guys, right? Let's see what page was it. Sorry. Page 220, huh? Ready? All right. okay. Now, thank you for praying for me and supporting the ministry. Pray I get healthier. Stay tight on my eating, not to become obese. And God save me from that. So that same will not hinder me. You ready? Here you go. 220. The note. I'm going to read it, but I'm going to show it to you. 220, right? All right. Right here. 220, note, footnote at the bottom, 14. Interestingly, the Hebrew of Psalm 82, 7a is singular, Adam, rather than the plural of the NIV's translation. So it actually reads, surely like a man, Adam, you'll die. The Midrash, the Jewish Midrash, Midrash Tehillim, 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 the Midrash on the Psalms, and at least one early commentator have read this verse as comparing the fall of these gods to the fall of Adam in the garden. The Midrash, Jewish Midrash on the Psalm, and a Jewish commentator. Here it is, the note right there. Who? The Midrash, right there. Psalms, and at least one early commentary have read this verse as comparing the fall of these gods to the fall of Adam. Here, Adam, the man Adam. And I just showed you Rashi, right? Page 220, footnote 14. See it? So much for your argument, Greg. And Kelly was stupid, huh? <laughs> Oh, Jehovah Jesus just buried you. But I'm on the spectrum, Greg, so don't attack me. You loving it? Had it not been, had it not been for Greg opening his mouth, I wouldn't have gotten these out. I have them for life, honestly. Over 90% of books I don't read. I have them there as reference so that when I am challenged or something, then all right, let me bring out the books. Do you understand what that means, right? The Hebrew is singular, ke adam, which led even Jews, rabbinic Jews, like here, Rashi, Rashi, to say that these rulers will die like Adam. It's not plural. But he thinks he's going to get me because I know where Greg's going to go. No, Sam, the Greek version, the Septuagint. I'm going to use the Septuagint to bury you in a minute, but hold on. As Adam. Right there, right? So here, I'm more prophet than Muhammad. I'm going to prophesy, Greg, that you think you're smarter than you are. You're going to abandon the Hebrew, Ke Adam. You're going to run from the Hebrew and go to the Greek, the Greek version. Because in the Greek, it says, it's plural. It's it's men. Got you there. No, you didn't. Because I'm going to use the Greek to bear you further. But before I do that, now, do you want to see the complete humiliation, annihilation of Greg Stafford in John 10? Are you ready? The complete humiliation, annihilation of Greg Stafford? Because what is he trying to argue? Let me remind you what he's trying to argue. You thought this was bad. Caught you. And by the way, the, the phrase ke adam, ke adam, preposition ke and adam, used to other places. Job 31, 33, and Jose 6, 7, and nothing in the context suggests that it's not referring to the historical Adam of Genesis. Here, I'll show it to you. 
Gotcha. We have fun. I may do a part. part one. So you think you thank Kelly for being stupid to get Greg a set, and thank Greg for lying to Dragon to prick him in his arrogance to think he's refuting. Because then that let me, and I pray I'm a true slave of the true God, Jehovah Father and Spirit, that Jehovah Jesus Almighty by his spirit now is using me to crush the lies of Stafford's blasphemies. Here's that Adam again here. If I had covered Adam, my transgressions, nothing in the context suggests that it's not referring to historical Adam. So he's saying, if I, like Adam, had covered my sin. Same phrase, Adam. Because Adam tried to cover his sin. Right? And then Hosea 6, 7. Hosea 6, 7. Ke Adam, singular. Hosea 6, 7. Oh, we're just beginning. We're just beginning, folks. Hosea 6, 7. But they, Ke Adam. Here it says men, but no. It's ke Adam. Now the singular can be a collective singular, but it's but they like Adam transgressed the covenant. Nothing in the context shows it's not referring to the historical Adam. In other words, in these three places, the historical Adam is being set forth as an example of what happens to those individuals who, like Adam, sin and break the covenant. They die. They don't prosper. You with me there? You with me there? So thank Stafford, because now God is using Stafford to take us to a higher level. So didn't I say that Stafford is being used by Jehovah Jesus to make more Trinitarians? Stafford doesn't realize he's being used to destroy Arianism, his fake God, and bring glory to the triune God. Thank you, Stafford. Appreciate you, man. You're supposed to refute the Trinity, not help me. Help us. Jehovah Jesus doesn't need your help, but he's going to take your blasphemy to silence you. Right? Okay, but now watch this one. Poor Greg. I think, Greg, you need to ignore me like Kelly. You and Kelly should focus on each other. Because every time you focus on me, all that happens is the dragon pricks you. You start manifesting, and you do 50-hour set. Now, guys, how many of you want to bet me he's going to do a 1,000-hour session? For the next thousand hours, he's going to try to respond to me. No break, because he can't sleep at night. It's now eating him up. Now watch the burial, right? Okay. This is where it's going to get really bad. Damn, Greg. Damn. Oh, here we go again. It's not working. Okay. Here we go again. It's not working. So let's go here. Damn, Greg. What the hell happened to you, sir? Damn. Watch here. This is where it's going to get really bad. You ready? Thank you, Kelly, for notifying me about this site because that's NSV, ES, ESV. At least something good came out of you. Remember earlier I said I had asked a question. I had asked a question. And Greg said that he has maintained the same position. He hasn't changed, and I already know his position. I asked Greg, when Jesus is on earth, he was only human, right? Yes. He was not angelic human, right? No. He wasn't truly an angel, truly human? No. Only one nature. He was human, fully human, a man, no more, no less. This is what he says. This is his position. And that's what the Joe's Witnesses believe. The Joe's Witnesses believe that when Mary conceived that male baby, that male baby was only human, fully human, but only human. He wasn't angelic. He wasn't divine. He wasn't a God. He was only human. So they believe that the man Jesus, from conception to his death, was only human, fully human, a male person, but he wasn't an angel. He wasn't a God. Because in their theology, and Greg believes this, I need you to listen. In their theology, the archangel Michael ceased to be. And his life force was transferred into the womb of Mary so that that man, Jesus, had the life force of Michael, but he wasn't an angel. He's only human. Then they believe, and Greg believes this too, 
Greg believes this too. That this point, he hasn't changed. Then they believe that when the man Jesus died, he ceased to exist. So they don't believe the man Jesus was resurrected. They believe the man Jesus died, ceased to exist. His body was dissolved. And then Michael was recreated, brought into being with the memories of Jesus. So Greg does not believe Jesus was the archangel Michael on earth. He doesn't believe Jesus was an angel on earth. He was only human with only a human nature. He was a man, no more, no less. Now you see, because in his arrogance, Satan has made him arrogant, he just buried himself. Do you know why? What? Yep, it is. Now Lepanto, but watch the burial because the guy's not that intelligent. He is the leading Aryan apologist. Brilliant in refuting evolution. Brilliant in refuting transgenderism, homosexuality. Brilliant in his understanding of the divine name. But when it comes to the Trinity and exegeting the biomorphous Trinity, he is pathetically bad, and yet he's the best Aryan apologist. Right? Okay, now watch here. What is Greg trying to prove? He's trying to prove that when Jesus quotes Psalm 82, there it's talking about the angelic sons of God who are gods. And Jesus is saying, I'm one of them. Now, you see, let's see who's thinking sharply by the power of the Holy Spirit may illuminate us. So he's trying to say that here, Jesus is quoting this to show the Jews, hey, I'm not the only son of God. I'm not the only one who's a God, a son of God. Even your Old Testament says there are gods who are sons of God. And that's not blasphemy. And I'm one of them. Does anyone see how he just buried himself or no? Does anyone see how he just buried himself? Anybody or no? Who's thinking? This is a man speaking who's only a man, who's not even an angelic creature, partially angelic or fully angelic and partially or fully human. So that means he's just a man. He's not even a God. He's not even an angelic creature at this point. How can Psalm 82 justify Jesus being one of the angelic sons of God when he wasn't an angel anymore and therefore he wasn't one of the angelic sons of God? He was merely human, a human son of God. Hello, moron. Hello, moron. See what Satan the dragon did to you? He made you stupid, right? He just made you stupid. Because Jesus cannot be claiming to be one of these gods because he's no longer an angel, moron, according to you. He's just a man on earth. And if he's just a man on earth, then he's no longer one of the angelic sons of God, is he? So how can his appeal to a passage that talks about angelic sons of God being gods justify his claim when he's not an angel? He's only a man at this point. So a Jew could have said, yeah, we, we get it. There are angels who are gods and sons of God, but you're not one of them. You're a man. Hello? See the embarrassment? You see the embarrassment? You see how he buried him? But in his arrogance, he's so stupid, he didn't see it. See, Emmanuel, you got it, right? And notice what their argument was. Their argument was that he, a man, made himself out to be God. How does appealing to a text about spirit creatures being called gods justify that a man made himself out to be God? Hello, Moroff. You just buried yourself, Greg, but you're too arrogant and demonized, and therefore too stupid to see it, and you made fun of Kelly. Do you guys get it or no? I hope you got it. Right? Did you get it or no? You're gone, Bible pervert, raping the Bible. May the Lord silence you and shut down your ministry. Here, notice. What was their objection? Right here. I am the Father one. 
The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I showed you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you stoning me? The Jews answered him, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, and because you being a man, Greg, did the dragon for, forget to tell you this part? A man, make yourself out to be God. But now, more off over here wants you to believe that by appealing to a passage which speaks of angelic creatures, not humans, angelic creatures as gods, somehow Jesus is saying, I'm one of them. How? Their problem was with him being a man, making himself out to be God. How does appealing to a text about angelic creatures being called gods and sons of God Remove the charge of blasphemy and answer their objection, Greg. Right? Did everyone get it or no? They're not asking whether he is an angel who makes himself out to be God. You're a man. And according to Greg, that's all he is. He's just a man. He's not anything other than a man. He wasn't even an angel at this time. He sees being an angel. He only had one nature. You see, Greg, how stupid you are? And your arrogance manifesting because of the dragon filling you? You didn't know I was setting you up. I wanted you to be stupid to say one nature. Because then that means he's no longer an angelic son of God. He's no longer an angelic God. At this point, he's just a man, so he cannot be one of these gods, according even to your perversion. Did everyone get the burial or no? I like this guy. Right? You see, when you oppose the true God and blaspheme the true God, God makes you look stupid and embarrasses you so you can repent. And if you harm yourself, he will then crush you because of your pride. Look what God is doing to Greg. Look what he's doing to Kelly. Look what he's doing to James White. Look what he's doing to Anthony Rogers. God forbid we end up like them. May the Lord save us. Right? See it? I, I'm doing it for you. I want it to sink in. That's why I keep repeating myself. You see it? Now, your 15 subscribers, that Yahoo Allah. Come on, little girls. Czar, Bankhead One. Come join me and refute me. Because when I asked him to join my live stream, he was too busy. Okay, do you see? He wants his cake to eat in two. Greg, you don't believe he's an angel at this point. He's no longer an angelic son of God. He's no longer an angelic God. He's just a man. He's a human son of God. So how does a passage that speaks of angelic creatures being angelic sons of God, angelic gods in a lower sense than the true God, answer their objection that a man is making himself out to be God. Man, if I were you, I wouldn't show my face anymore. Oh, that coward that showed up there but didn't show up with me? Filthy coward. May I be filled with the same Holy Spirit that filled Athanasius. May the Spirit empower me to love and worship the Trinity, love and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ in holiness and purity. And in zeal and knowledge as Athanasius. And I die glorifying the Trinity like Athanasius did. I'm nowhere near him. But I pray I'm filled with the spirit the way he was. Not possessed by an evil unclean spirit like Greg. Did you get the answer now, right? Exactly, Trinity and Joy. Can you pray that for me? To remain humble and teachable and pure? And not succumb, and God heal me of my vices, food addiction, obesity, and lust. All right? All right, so now that we bury this argument, 
I'm going to take it to the next step. So notice, Greg's entire argument got buried. You don't believe he's an angel. He's just a man. How does a text about angelic gods, angelic sons of God, answer their objection that a man is making himself out to be God, not an angel, more off? And you don't believe he's an angel here. He's not an angel. So you're saying that Jesus is a terrible communicator because he quotes a passage that does nothing to refute their objection. Everyone got that now? This is why I told you it was a shish kebab. Shish kebab. Man, why didn't I join? I told that coward Yahu Allah to join. You know that, right? But he made excuses not to join me, that wicked. And he's a Staffordite. He's one of Stafford's cronies, one of his 10 subscribers. Glad they destroyed him. See, Greg, even your students are getting obliterated by solid Trinitarians like Nick Norelli and Avery. Your religion's a joke. Your God is a joke because your God doesn't exist. All right, now can I move on to the next point? If we got this out of the way, you see it proved too much, right? But now Greg thinks he's going to catch me. Even though the Hebrew, it's ke adam, ke adam, like Adam, and that's how the rabbis interpret it. Let me show it to you again. He's going to go to the Septuagint. And if you want annihilation, you're going to get annihilation. You want annihilation? Oh, boy, poor guy. You want annihilation? All right. See, it says, Ke Adam, like Adam. But he goes, ah, oh, Sam, but I'm going to bury you, Sam. Pervert Sam, satanic Sam, I'm going to bury you. I'm going to bury you, Sam, because the Greek. But Greg, remember, I, I got autism. I have an excuse. What's your excuse? Take it easy on me. Don't bully me. I, I, I'm on the spectrum, dude. I'm on the spectrum of autism, but you're on the spectrum of demonization. But, uh, but Sam, the Greek has plural men, but ye die as men. Ton, I'm sorry, where is it? Umis di os anthropi. Oh, see? But they also will fall as one of the princes. So if dying as men means they're not men, then dying as one of the rulers means they're not a ruler. But we'll put that aside. Okay, we'll go with the plural, anthropi, right? Ke os is ton archon ton piptiti. All right, we'll, we'll put that aside. Okay. Let's agree. Let's agree. Focus, everyone. All right. He's dead, huh? No, not yet. We're going to do overkill. And then pray. I got to do some cardio, keep the weight down. Oh, by the way, I got a debate tomorrow. I even forgot. I got a debate tomorrow. I'm going to show it to you. Lord willing, pray for me. I'm debating a Unitarian. Stacy Tubal for comedy. I really like him. He really actually makes me laugh. Now watch. Watch this. Now that he appealed to the Septuagint. Now, Greg, you know your religion's over, right? Because I'm going to now show you that according to the Septuagint, the gods of the nations are demons. Okay? Watch where I'm going to go with this. The gods of the nations are demons. You thought this was bad? Oy vey, what's going to happen right now? Let's go to Psalm 95 in the Greek, which is Psalm 96 in the Hebrew. Psalm 95, 5, Greg, this is where you got to shut down your channel. If you're a man of integrity and you're honest, shut down your channel. Go do a full-time job because defending your Aryan demonic system ain't cutting it. When you fight against Jehovah Jesus, you lose, and you lose badly, and he, and he exposes you. You lose. You lose. Watch here, guys. Watch here. Psalm 95, 5, for all the gods of the heathen, heathen are devils, but the Lord made them. Now notice, he's saying to you, these gods are the angelic rulers who rule the nations. The heathen meaning the nations, right? Here. Hoti pantis e thei ton ethnon. Ethnon meaning ethnicities, nations. Demonia. Demonia is where you get demons. So the gods of the nations are demons. Demonia, right? 
You want to see the burial, guys? You really want to see how bad it's going to be now? Okay. Now, it's not just the Greek. Remember, if you're going to plead to the Greek that those gods die like men, plural, not like Adam, well, the Greek also says those gods are the devils, the demons. Now, watch the blasphemy and watch the burial and humiliation. Oti pantis e thei ton ethnon, the nations, ethnicities. Their gods are demonia, demonia, demons, devils. You guys ready for the burial? Okay. Please. It's going to be so beautiful. Music to our ears. And Paul agrees. What does Paul say? Paul says that the idols worshipped by the nations are demons and not God. You know why? Because watch here. Oh, you're going to love this. Oh, boy, are you going to love this? Watch here. <laughs> Oh, watch 1 Corinthians 10, 20. Let me see if I can do both. And then what does Paul say to the Gentiles who converted? Watch here. Watch here. 1 Corinthians 10, 19 to 22. You ready? You ready? What do I mean then? That a thing, sacrifice, idols, anything? Or that an idol is anything? No, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice... They sacrifice the demons, not to God. So again, Paul agrees. The gods and goddesses of the nations are demons. The idols may not be real, but the idol, idols are a representation of demons who are appearing as gods and goddesses. So Zeus is Satan. Diana is a demon. Hermes is a demon. They appear the way you want. They'll appear as aliens. They'll appear as Zeus, as Baal, as Allah. They'll appear right as shiva so your bible tells you the demons are real and they are the ones who are appearing as gods and goddesses so when you hear stories when you hear stories i need you to listen of people encountering shiva and krishna and vishnu or Bra that's not lies don't think they're fake they are seeing these beings but they're not gods it's not shiva it's satan or a demon appearing as Zeus, as appearing as Hermes, appearing as Aphrodite, appearing as Hades, appearing as Baal, appearing as Allah. As, that's what they are. Or appearing as Joshua's mother. Because Joshua James, his mother, is a demon. She is a spiritual whore. That's why he's a bastard, son of a spiritual whore. And his father is Lucifer. Stop barking and acting brave, Joshua, because I'll bury you like the dog you are, you filth. So now watch here. Watch here. Buddy, I'm on a live stream, buddy. You're calling me while I'm on a live stream. I know you need attention, sir. Call you later. All right. Watch here. So demons, not to God. I do not want you to become share in demons. See, when you go and worship Zeus, you're not worshiping Zeus. You're worshiping a demon, Satan. Joshua James' father, because his mother is the bride of Lucifer. All right? You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we not stronger? We are not stronger than he, are we? Now, get ready for the burial. Get ready for the burial. You ready? Get ready for the burial. What did Psalm 95, 5 say? The gods of the nations, they're demons, right? What did Paul say? The gods of the nations are demons, right? But now watch Paul again. Galatians 4, 8 to 9. However, he's nice talking to the Gentiles. The Gentiles who turned away from these gods and goddesses, from their idols to worship the true God. Watch her. Stafford, shut down your stream. You're a joke. You've been cooked. I'm at least on the spectrum. What's your excuse for manifesting? However, at that time, when you did not know God, the Gentiles, you were slaves 
to those who which by nature are no gods. Bye bye, Stafford. We are the champions, my friends. He just said the gods of the nations that rule over them, they are not gods at all. They are not gods by nature. Bye bye, Staffer. Bye bye. Bye 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 bye. Bye bye. Uh, bye 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 bye. By nature are no gods. How are you going to say that Jesus is likening himself to these gods who are demons, Satan, who are not gods at all? You blasphemous son of Satan. You're saying Jesus is one of them? Because that's what Psalm 82 is. It's about the gods who rule the nations. Right, Greg? Well, the gods who rule the nations are demons, Greg. Satan, your father, the dragon, and his angels. And Paul says they are not gods at all, Greg. Greg, but now that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how is it that you turn back again to the weak and worthless elemental things to which you desire to be enslaved all over again? The elemental things are the demonic forces that permeate and corrupt the earth. And what were they slaves to? They were slaving to those who are not gods by nature. And who are those gods? Who are not gods by nature, the idols. For they themselves, 1 Thessalonians 1, 9 to 10. For they themselves report about us what kind of a reception you ha we had with you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. So the gods that the nation serve are the idols that Paul says are demons that are not gods by nature, and they turned away from these demons who are not gods to serve the true God. Okay, do you guys caught it? Greg wants to convince you they are gods and sons of God. Paul says, Greg, you're a liar and you belong to Satan, your father. They are not gods by nature, who by nature are no gods at all. So the nations were serving demons who ruled over them who are not gods at all by nature. It's over. See, that's what happens when you run your wife, your, your mouth off. It's over. It's over. You caught it, right? Right? Now watch him tap dance and run and explain away this passage. Number one, Greg, these are Gentiles. Number two, Greg, according to Paul, the Gentiles were serving, worshiping idols, representation of their gods, whom he says are demons. And these are the same gods that you're arguing are mentioned in Psalm 82 because they're the rulers of the nations. And Paul says, they're, not only are they not God, they're not gods at all. They are no gods at all by nature. Greg, you see, I say, when better for you to shut your mouth, Greg, because you're not as smart as you think you are. You see it, guys? I mean, it didn't sink in. So what do we learn about the gods of the nations? They are demons right here. The Gentiles sacrificed to demons, not to God. And these demons, right, that the idols represent, meaning the idols were built representing what they thought were gods or actually demons. So these demons that the Gentiles served unknowingly, they are not gods at all, who are by nature no gods. So when they turned around from these idols, from these demons that they serve, who are no gods at all, who are not gods by nature, then they ended up serving the living and true God. Did everyone get it or no? Before I move on. Everyone got it now? 
So now let's wrap up John 10, and I'm done with John 10. See, I told you. Now, unless in your latest video on John 10, you have something earth shattering, you're a joke, Greg. You're the best Aryan apologist, but what does it tell you that the best is a joke and easily destroyed? This is their best, guys. God annihilated his fake God, his fake Christ, the fake spirit, his fake cult. Now he's going to manifest. Right? Now watch this. Now let's wrap it up. Uh, Helter, you're a demon and a son of a demon for saying that. Now get the hell out of here. All right? Get the hell out of here. Demon. I pray I am. May the same Holy Spirit that filled Elijah, Elijah, fill me to be holy and pure in love with Jesus and never shame Jesus, but glorify the Lord even unto death. I too, Donald. I still love the man. I have a soft spot for him. I want him to repent, but he keeps doubling down and manifesting with his nastiness. So I get nastier. You get nasty, I get nastier. Because I'll put you in your place by the power of Jehovah Jesus. Now let's wrap it up, shall we? Now let's read John 10 in context to see what Jesus was saying, which I've answered millions of times. Do so you think he listens? Let's see if Bible Gateway will work. Let's see. Let's see here. Let's see. Ready? You ready? Let's do this. Well, hold on. Yep, let's do this. Now let's conclude. And we'll be done with this. I'm done with this. I'll do something on John 8 to really scatter his ashes all over Mecca and then burn his cult down. Right? And we'll be done with him and I can go into other topics. Okay, so we go here, Isaiah 43, 13. Now watch here. Then we're going to now see the context. Really? Okay. Now we're going to look at the context. Now let's go to John 10. You see why the Jews correctly reasoned that Jesus was claiming to be God? Oh, there it goes. See, it doesn't work. What the hell is happening? All right, so we're going to do it here. Forget it. All right. Sorry, guys. I got to do this. Why is that working, man? Satan, huh? The Lord Jesus rebuked the evil one. All right, two, two, six. Let's do this. Brutus, what day is it? Oh, la, 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 la. You and me, all of the people. Now, why did the Jews think that Jesus was claiming to be God, not the Father, but claiming to be God, even though he's a man? Let's see. You ready? And we're done. We're going to be done with this. Let's do this here. Can you see the screen? Yep. All right, now, you with me? Focus, Vastelti. Don't tell us what they believe, don't believe. We didn't ask for your opinion. Okay, so let's begin. Pay attention to the language. So, Durami 3239. See now that I, I am he. Ani who? Greek, ego me. And I'm going to watch what I'm going to do to you with the ego me, Greg. I'm not done. There is no God besides me. It is I who put to death and give life. It is I who put to death and give life. So notice, there is no other God who does this, who gives life. I have wounded, and it is I who heal. There is no one who can deliver from my hand. So remember this. The true God has power over life and death. So if all the Muslims come to kill me, and God doesn't want me to die, ain't nothing happening. If all the doctors want to preserve my life, and God wants me to die, ain't they ain't saving my life. He determines that. He has control over life and death. And no one can deliver from his hand. Now, remember, God is spirit. God is spirit. Meaning he doesn't have a physical hand. So hand is a metaphor, meaning power. No one can resist his power. Stop him from doing what he wants. Because there is no power equal to his, let alone greater than his. No one can resist his power. That's what hand means. Keep that in mind. 1 Samuel 2 2. That was Deuteronomy 3 2 39. 1 Samuel 2 2. There is no one holy like the Lord, Yahuwah, Yahuwah. Indeed, there is no one besides you, nor is there any rock like our rock, nor is there any rock like our rock. Right? So there's no one like God, no God that can compare to him. So what does the Lord Yahweh do that no other God can do? The Lord kills and makes alive. Yahuwah makes alive. He brings down the shoal and raises up. He resurrects. He gives life and resurrects. 
Okay, keep that in mind. Okay? We're going to have fun. All right? Take care easy, man. Pray I go do some cardio now. All right, watch here. What, okay, what else does God do that no other God can do? Isaiah 43, 13. Even from eternity, I am he. There is none who can deliver out of my hand. No one can deliver from my power and control. No one can resist my power when I choose to do something. I act, and who can reverse, reverse it? Who can stop me from bringing about my will and my plans? Who can resist my power to do what I want? Nobody. That's what hand means. Okay. So far with me, right? You're enjoying this? Because we're going to wrap up. We're going to go out with a bang. We're done with Greg. But I'm going to do John 8 and bury him further. Psalm 95, 6 to 7. Come, let us worship and bow down. Psalm 95, 6 to 7. Let us kneel before the Lord, Yahoo, Yahuwah, our maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. Meaning, we're the sheep under his care, under his control. We are the sheep being preserved by his power. Today, if you would hear his voice. So, believers are the sheep in Yahweh's hand, under his control, in his power to preserve them, and they are to hear his voice. Okay? Now watch Jesus. Now you're going to see why the Jews correctly understood Jesus claiming to be God, though a man, but incorrectly assume that that's blasphemy. My sheep hear my voice. You hear it? First connection. My sheep hear my voice. They are the sheep of his hand, Jehovah's hand. They are to hear Jehovah's voice. But Jesus says, they're my sheep, they hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And I give eternal life to them. They will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. So notice, they are the sheep in his hand, under his care, under his power. And because he's all powerful, no one can stop him from preserving them. Sheep are the sheep of Jesus' hand. They hear his voice. But wait, here we're told, the sheep are the sheep of Jehovah's hand. Jehovah, our maker. And they are to hear his voice. Does that sound like Jesus is claiming to be Jehovah in the flesh, though he's not the father? Watch. Hold on. Okay. That's the first connection. But then he says, I give eternal life to them, meaning I have the ability to make every single believer who remains in my power everlasting, never-ending, immortal existence and make them morally incorruptible. What kind of power must this be that he can make believers morally incorruptible and physically immortal and prevent anyone from destroying them? Okay. But wait, he says he gives eternal life, right? And no one will snatch him out of his hand? Okay, let's see if that sounds familiar. There is no one, no one who can deliver out of my hand, Jehovah. All right. Jehovah makes alive and raises, raises them up. Okay. Watch here. None can deliver out of my hand, my power, Jehovah says it, and I give life. Why does Jesus speak as if he's Jehovah? Why does Jesus speak as if he's Jehovah? No, we call your, mo your mother a moron, not a Mormon. You dumb little spiritual bastard, barking like a dog. See it? Why does Jesus say what is said of Jehovah? They're my sheep, hear my voice, in my hand, meaning under my care, under my power. I will give them eternal life. No one can deliver them out of my hand. Jehovah says the believers are his sheep in his hand, meaning under his power. None can deliver out his hand when he wants to act and he makes a life. Why does Jesus sound as if he's Jehovah? Okay, well, hold on. But then let's go further. Then he says right here. Then he says right here. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. He's greater than anyone who would oppose them. No one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. 
No one can snatch them out of my hand, my care, my power. Hand is a metaphor. No one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand, care, and power. Why? Because I and the father are one. We are one in our ability, one in power, which is why I can do what only God does, which is what the father does. So like the father, I can do what Jehovah does. Now, in Greek, the verb are is plural, esmen. It's literally we are one. Almost done, folks. Now we're going to understand the reaction of the Jews. Now we're going to understand the reaction of the Jews. Now look at it. The verb esmen. Here it is. You guys click on it. It's literally I and the Father, one we are. One we are. Yes, I know. I'm sorry, brother. May the dogs forgive me when they see me on the day of judgment. May the Lord have mercy on me. One we are. Are S men. Verb, right? Right here. Present indicative active. First person plural. So he's not the father, but he's one with the father in power and ability. Now the Jews picked up stones against them. Do you see why? They knew their Old Testament. Jesus answered him, I showed you many gurus from the Father. For which of them are you stoning me? The Jews answered him, for a good work, we do not stone you, but for blasphemy. Because you being a man, make yourself out to be God. See, they're seeing a man, and he is. And they just saw that he claimed the things that the Old Testament ascribes to Jehovah. So he's making himself to be God, but he's not the Father. And they're right. He's a man who made himself out to be God, but they're wrong for thinking he's blaspheming. This is where you're going to bury Greg. Greg, let me bury you a little more, friend. Nothing personal. Let me bury you a little more. You guys are not tired, right? You don't mind if I do a thorough job of finishing this so that my next response to Greg will be John 8, right? Let me get some water. Greg, Greg, because this one's going to be a nightmare. You Can you hang for another 30 minutes, guys? Because I want to really... Send Greg into hiding. Really, I'm not done. Because I'm going to go back to Psalm 82. Greg, here's my challenge. Can you show me a single verse? He used to be a Jehovah's Witness. He started his own cult, Christian Witnesses of Jah. Can you show me a single verse, Greg, in the Old Testament where a God, lowercase g, besides Jehovah, a God gives Everlasting, immortal existence, where a God is the shepherd of the sheep, and the sheep are in the power, control of a God, and they're to hear the voice of a God, and no one can deliver out of the hand of a God. Can you show me that, Greg? Show that to me, please. Where does the Old Testament say that? A God makes alive. A God is the one whom the sheep must follow. And they're in the hand of a God and his voice they hear. So when they translate or when Greg says, see, Jesus claimed to be a God, that tells you how much of a son of the dragon he is. The Jews know no mere lowercase God says what Jesus said. Because in the Old Testament, it's the true capital, capital G God, right? Who makes a lie, puts to death, whose voice the sheep hear, whose hand the sheep are under, right? Not lowercase a God. So they're right. You're making yourself out to be God, not a God. Bible pervert, rape in the Bible, the very thing you accuse Kelly of. Okay, you got it? They were right. So then what is Jesus' point? Now let's get to the point. All right. Jesus answered him, has it not been written in your law? I said you are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, this is going to be key in burying the Aryan C D D W J heretical satanic movement. To whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Do you say of him when the Father sanctified, sent into the world? You are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God? Now here, if I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. If I'm not doing the miracles, 
these miracles that attest the Father is with me, working with me, then don't believe me. But if I do them, though you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, I'm the Father. Now notice, they're now more determined to kill him all the more. Therefore, they were seeking him to seize him, and he eluded their grasp. Why is it that even after he quotes Psalm 82, they still want to kill him all the more? Because it's obvious that they didn't understand him to be denying that he's God in an absolute sense, though he's not the father, even though he's a man. But he was now reinforcing the fact that he is truly God in an absolute sense, equal to the father, distinct from him, even though he's a man. Because now they want to kill him all the more. Right? You with me there? But now let's go to the psalm and show you the burial. You ready? Now, really, it's going to be bad. I mean, so bad. And by the way, God says he makes alive, right? To watch who Jesus claims to be. The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down a shoal and raises up. He raises the dead. All right. Jehovah, Yahweh does it, right? There is no God who can do what the true God does. Put to death and give life. But then Jesus, the lowercase g God, who is not Jehovah Almighty, says this. John 11, 25, 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? So here's my challenge to you, Greg. Show me in your Old Testament, Greg. You can even translate it and pervert it like you do the New Testament. Show me a God, a lowercase g God, not the true God, Jehovah, saying, I am the resurrection of life. Show it to me, Greg. Show me a lowercase g God says, I'm the resurrection of life. Greg, where are you? Greg, come on up. No, no, Greg, come on up here, guys, here. Greg, here's my link, Greg. We destroyed your fake God. Remember, I'm autistic. We destroyed your fake God, your fake cult. You're, you're buried, dude. You got nothing. But here's the link, Greg, so everyone sees it. Join me, Greg. Unlike you, who blocked me from commenting and you think I'm getting angry, I made you a mod. Greg, don't hide. The dragon, though molesting you psychologically, we still pray for you. Come on up, guys. How many of you guys want to see Greg join me now and put me in my place? Put a one. Come on, Greg. I'll give you a few minutes. If not, you can go and do a 100-hour session. Greg, you do a 100-hour session? Greg, please, please, Greg, answer my challenge. Show me a lowercase g God. Come up and put me in my place, Greg. Here's the link so people see it. So people see you're in the chat. So they see I'm calling you out. Or ask your 15 subscribers to come and fight for you. Come here. Not you, Vincent. Get the hell out of here, Vincent. Or I'm going to block you, you dumb little monkey. Here he is. So, guys, I gave him the link. Show me a lowercase g God in the Old Testament. Lowercase g God in the Old Testament. Saying, none can deliver out of my hand. I make alive. Lowercase g God, Greg. Come on up, boy. We call you up, boy. Where is he? Tell Yahoo Allah to fight for you. Send your 15 subscribers, Greg. Still like you, man. But remember, I'm autistic. Just don't manifest. Because the spirit that fills me is the true Holy Spirit. But the spirit that caused you manifest ain't from the true God. Come on, Greg. We waiting, boy. We waiting, son. You're making Kelly look smart. Show me in the Old Testament where a lowercase g God says that the believers are his sheep in his hand. They hear his voice. Come on, Greggy. And how can Jesus be one of the angelic God, sons of God, in John 10, when he wasn't an angel anymore, heretic? You busted yourself. He's only a man. Bye-bye, Greggy. Come on now. Make my day, son. Now, let's continue his burial. It's over for you, Greg. Go, go do full-time work. Shut down your cult. Jehovah Jesus destroyed you and your fake God. So do another 100-hour session because you're not going to join me. All right, now, 
Everyone else, watch here. Greg, make sure you hear this part because this is going to be juicy. It's probably going to be a 500-hour session. Guys, anyone bet me he's going to do a 500-hour session after this because he can't sleep for weeks? Like, Kelly, your boy, your Benoit, watch here. Greg, answer this in your live stream, please. Answer it. Watch here. God takes a stand in his own congregation. Or God takes a stand in the congregation of Eli. Let me use the JW Bible. Hold on. Let's go here. The Bible he likes, even though he thinks he's more qualified because he's producing his own perversion of scripture. I'm looking forward to that. And your sharpest rule book. So I can tear it to shreds too, Greg. I'm waiting, Greg. Please publish the book, sir. Publish it. You don't respond in the comments, but you won't come up here. All right, that's good. All right, watch here, Psalm. Let's use this Bible perversion, shall we? And while he's doing his 500-hour response, I'll be debating a Unitarian. Lord will I'll get you the link. Okay, guys, you ready? Yeah, I, I have confidence in him that the dragon will empower him to do a 500-hour response. Stacy, he thinks that by doing a 10-hour response, that he's going to give the impression he's responding and refuting. That's simply a coward's way of not dealing directly with the person who's inviting him to have a discussion. Because how many people are going to watch 10 hours of a guy? Sam, pervert Sam, you're raping Sam. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, I'm, a, I'm autistic. What's your excuse? All right. Now watch here. We having fun, guys? Okay, watch here. I'm going to use their translation. God takes his place in the divine assembly. In the middle of the gods, he judges. How long will you continue to judge with injustice and show partiality to the wicked? Selah. Defend the lowly and the fatherless. Render justice to the helpless and destitute. Rescue the lowly and the poor. Save them out of the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They are walking about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are being shaken. I have said you are gods. All of you are sons of the Most High. But you will die just as men do. And like any other prince, you will fall. <clears throat> it's actually like one of the princes, you will fall. Rise up, O God, and judge the earth. For all the nations belong to you. Literally, and Greg knows this. Rise up, O God, and judge the earth. For all the nations belong to you. Literally, it's rise up, O God, judge the earth. For all the nations are your inheritance. Inheritance. All right, I'll show it to you. Inheritance. Let me switch. Can I switch the Bible? All right, let's do it. And he knows it. He can't deny it because I'll show you the Hebrew. Watch here, guys. So, Greg, here's my challenge. In the psalm, who is this God? Who is this God that arises to judge the earth and inherit the nations? He will inherit the nations as his possession when he destroys the gods of the nations who are demons. Galatians 4, 8 say, says, are not gods by nature at all. And you want to compare Jesus to one of them. See, you because you're a blasphemy. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all the nations. Now, guys, who is in this psalm? Listen, don't read to me New Testament. Who is this God that will rise to judge the nations and destroy the gods and dispossess them? It's the true God. It's the true God. It's the true God. It doesn't say a lowercase g God. Another God, another member of the council will judge these gods and punish them. In the psalm, the God who's bringing a sentence and verdict against them, the God who will dispossess them and destroy them, the God on the nations is the true God. Okay, keep that in mind. It's the true God. All right, but we got a problem, folks, because according to the New Testament, the God who inherits the nations, the God who judges these gods, the God who judges the earth is the Son. Greg, it's over for you, buddy, because in this psalm, the God who judges the earth, the God who inherits the nations, the God who punishes the gods of the nations is the true God. Nothing about a lowercase g God, but we're told in the New Testament, Jesus is the one 
who will consign the devil and his angels, who will judge the nations, judge the earth, and will inherit the nations. Game over, Greg. Here we go. Game over, Greg. Bye-bye. That means he is the true God, Greg. Oh, Greg. Oh, oh no. Oh, no, Greg. Oh, bye-bye, Greg. Bye-bye. Hasta la vista. See y'all. Wouldn't want to be y'all. Here it is, Greg. It's over. It's over. It's over for Greg. Bye bye. It's over. Here you go. Bye bye, Greg. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Bye bye. John 10 is your burial, buddy. It's been your burial. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he'll sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations. And he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he'll place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you are blessed by my father. So the son of man is the son of God. He's the king. He's the Lord. He judges the earth and determines their fate. But hold on. Wait, guys. God of Psalm 82, 1, is the God who rises to judge the earth, is the God who inherits the nations. You see how what he thought was a good argument destroyed his Arianism? Destroyed his fake God, his fake Jesus, his fake spirit? Which is why he's now going to manifest and do more videos. Than, ah, Sam, pervert! Ha, ha, he, ho, ho, he, ah, yeah. Take it easy, Greg. I have autism. What's your excuse? Okay. By my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now, I'll skip for the sake of time. Then over here, the ones on the left. Hopefully, Greg, you're not going to be on the left. But if you are keep the way you are, you're headed this way with your father, the devil, the dragon. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed, and the eternal fire prepare for the devil and his angels. Oh, so he is the God that judges the earth and all the nations and determine their destinies? Jesus? He's the God? The Son of Man, the Son of God? John 5, 22, for the father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the son. But wait, Greggy, Greggy, where are you? God judges the earth. He will come and arise to judge the earth. He will inherit the nations, Greggy. Where are you? Which God? The God who takes a stand to condemn the other gods. This is the true God, Greg, not your Lord case G, fake Jesus. Where are you, Greggy? Greggy, come out to play. See what's happening? Jehovah Jesus is wrecking his fake God. Hold on. But the gods there are the demons who are not gods by nature. And who's going to destroy Satan? Let's see. Colossians 2, 13, 15. And you who are dead in your trespasses and circumcision of your flesh... God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing to the cross. Look, Jesus, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Jesus disarmed the spiritual rulers, the gods of the nations, putting them to shame and conquering them. So who is the God that punishes the gods? Well, in Psalm 82, it's a true God. The New Testament is Jesus. Still not convinced? 1 John 3, 8. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Damn, it's over for Greg. We care about you, Greg. I still love you, dude. I told you I do love you. I'm not lying. But you're of the devil and I have to muzzle you. Jehovah Jesus destroyed your fake God. Again, guys, Psalm 82, who judges the earth? The true God. Who inherits the nations? The true God. Who destroys the gods of the nations, which are the demons and Satan, who are not gods by nature? The true God. But the New Testament says that's Jesus. 
see what's happening to what he thought was what he thought was a slam dunk argument jesus is a god a son of god he's one of the angelic god and yet you don't believe he was an angel on earth see the dragon has made you stupid greg you're getting there on the level of kelly although hold on who inherits the nations again who will possess the nations let's see Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit the nations. <gasps> Hold on, Gregory. Where are you, Gregory? Hebrews 1, 2. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. Bye-bye, Gregory. The God that destroys the gods of the nations who are demons, who are not gods by nature at all, is the true God in Psalm 82. The God who judges the earth and inherits the nations is the true God in Psalm 82. New Testament, that true God is the Father's Son. He inherits the nations. He possesses the nations. He judges the earth, and he destroys the gods, the demons. It's over, Greggy. Greggy. Where are you? Come out to play. Oh, but wait. Let's put the icing on the cake, shall we? You want the icing on the cake? Reggie, come out to play. But watch here, guys, the worst burial of all. Because he's so blind, he doesn't see it. Watch here. Let's go back here. John 10, 34 to 36. Okay, watch here. Here, Jesus gave it away who he is. He's not one of these gods. But Greggy, my boy, is too blind. My Benoit is blind. My Benoit. Okay, Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said you are gods. Now watch the key. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came. Now, guys, notice. It's saying God's word came to them. And scripture cannot be broken. Now, it's not saying the scripture came to them, unless Greg is that blind and he's on the level of Kelly. The scripture didn't come to them. The word of God came to them to condemn them. God's word came to condemn them, and the scripture recorded that condemnation. You understand? The scripture recorded that condemnation. Okay, watch. Watch here. So the scripture didn't go to these gods. So the psalmist didn't write the scriptures to Greg's God, right? Because he serves the dragon, the God of the system of things. The psalmist wrote this as a lament to the true God to be sung by the people of God. But what came to them? The word of God, right? Now, guys, pay attention. This is the Janaza of Greg. I don't know, brother. I, I, Some people think I actually have autism, maybe Asperger's. Maybe I do. I'm okay with it. Who cares? If God is being glorified through my autism, and if I have it, may my autism bring him utmost glory. He's worthy. I don't know. I don't care, though. If I have it or not, who cares? At least I'm more sane than Greg and his gods and Kelly Powers. Now, watch here. It says, if he called them gods, whom the word of God came. Now, it says... That God's word came to them, but he that the word of God came to do what? To condemn them, right? What's the context? The word of God came to condemn them. Psalm 82, the word came to condemn them. So who judged them? The word of God. Who condemned them? The word of God. The word of God came to condemn them and judge them. But you know that word of God is? Jesus, Revelation 19, 13. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood. And the name by which he is called is the word of God. It's identical in Greek. Irony of ironies, but because Greg is blinded by the dragon, he didn't realize that here Jesus just implicitly showed he is that very word of God who came in judgment to condemn the gods, that word of God who is God, who judges the earth and inherits the nations. He is the one judging the rulers. Because he's the word of God who became flesh. And he's the word of God who comes to condemn the demons and evil rulers. So he's talking about himself coming in judgment against the rulers. The word of God came against these gods. 
And who is that word of God? Jesus. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood. And the name by which he is called is the word of God. Bye-bye, Greg. Greggy. Game over. You guys caught it? And here, let me prove it to you. Thank you, Greg. I told you. Jehovah Jesus using you to make more Trinitarians. Go and find something else to do. Start another business, dude. Your cult is of the devil. And the Lord will crush you if you don't repent. And I hope you repent before it's too late. Let me prove it to you. What's the word? Did everyone get it? Because I'm going to watch what I'm do to him in John 8. Watch what I'm do to him in John 8. Oh, boy. You thought this was bad. <laughs> oh, let's see. John 10. And we're done. Why don't you show up, Gregory? Do I need to post the link again, Gregory? Here. If them he called gods, theus, pros, us, o logos, to theu, the Lord of God, again he too, came. O logos, to theu, right? The word of God came to condemn them for their wickedness. Well, let's see who Jesus is. Remember the Greek, o logos, to theu, right? All right, who is Jesus? What he thought was a slam dunk, dunked and slammed his fake God. Revelation 19, 13. And having been clothed, the garment having dipped in blood, and is called the name, look of him, O Logos to Theu. The same John who wrote John, wrote Revelation. And who is Jesus? O Logos to Theu. Do you see the Greek? It's identical. Yeah, I've written a lot of articles on this dose. Support this brother's channel. See it? Identical? You guys should see the reaction on Rumble, Greg. They're mourning your funeral because your fake God couldn't save you. O Logos to Theu. And who came to condemn those gods? Who is that God that condemned them? The Word of God who is God. O Logos to Theu. It's done. Guys, it's over for this guy. Now, guys, if you love me for the sake of the Lord, pray for me. Pray God gives me strict discipline to control my appetites, not to be controlled, them to die to gluttony, laziness, lawfulness, die lust, to stay pure and holy, never shame the Lord, fall in scandal, stay tight on my eating habits. I got to do exercise and fast more. The Lord grant my daughter salvation. Bring them to me, and I see them grow up to be godly women. And the Lord gives me many years to see them grow up and die in their arms. The Lord bless this young lady and I come together, finish the race, and glorify the Lord in holiness. And pray God will provide for ministry, PayPal, Patreon. Greg, go back to business. Start another business. This ain't cutting for you. Your days are over. You're the best Aryan apologist, and you suck when it comes to Trinity. When it comes to Trinity, you're the best Aryan apologist. But because your God is fake, you suck and you got pulverized and your fake God got destroyed by Jehovah Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jehovah Jesus Christ became flesh and died. Jehovah Jesus Christ rose physically and bodily. Jehovah Jesus Christ ascended to heaven physically and bodily. And Jehovah Jesus Christ will return physically and bodily to judge the living dead. Amen, Jehovah Jesus. We love you. Keep us pure. Purify us in your blood. Purify our loved ones, our daughters in your blood, our children, my daughters. Fill us, seal us by the true Holy Spirit, who is Jehovah, to love you, worship you, never shame you, but die glorifying you, and give me the health I need and victory to be your holy servant. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Father, have mercy. Son of God, have mercy. Holy Spirit, have mercy. Maranathe, Lord willing. Oh, don't forget the debate. Hold on. I'm going to debate a Unitarian. More for comedy. Don't forget. Right here. My bad. Go here. Go to stand for truth. Standing for truth. I forgot. Pray for me. The Spirit fill me, anoint me to be humble and crush the blasphemies and the lies of Unitarianism. So you go here. Lord willing, tomorrow, I even forgot. I'll be de debating Stacy Tubalville. Pray God will give me miraculous anointment, anointing, anointing to recall scripture perfectly and demolish his lies, but do it lovingly. Because poor guy, he's a sweet soul, but lost. May Jesus deliver him and Greg from Satan, the dragon, their father. So there it is. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pray for my health. Got to go do some cardio. 
I need you, Lord. We need you. You don't need us. Amen. 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 Lord, to the Father, take care.